Hey guys, here is a new lab in our stm 2 h 5 MOOC. So this is a more advanced lab. We will be creating a USB application using USB X middleware. We will use USB CDC class for virtual COM port application. So let's get started. So here is a little recap about the Azure Artos middleware offering. So in terms of middleware, so here is what we have. First of all, the Azure Artos FredEx. So this is a real-time operating system. Then we also have uh, the offering of the Azure Artos FileX. So this is for file system, uh, folder run. And then uh, we also have uh, for TCP IP uh, stacks, the Azure Artos NetX Duo. And uh, finally, the Azure Artos USB-X. So this is the USB stack for host and device. So this is what we'll be using today during this lab. So here are the objectives of this lab. First, we're going to build a USB virtual comport application. So this is the main purpose of this lab. So we will use a virtual comport to print a hello world message on a terminal when the user button is pressed. So this project will include the following middleware. So the USB stack. So like we said, we're going to use the Azure Atos USB-X. And for the class, we'll use the CDC or ACM class. So CDC stands for Communication Device Class and ACM Abstract Control Model. We'll also use uh, for Atos the Azure Atos FredEx. So we're going to see how to create this application. For this lab, we're going to create a new project. So file, new, stm 32 project. For the part number, we'll use the stm 32 h 563 zit 6 And select it from the menu here. Okay, so this is the one. So that's the one on your nuclear board. And then press next. Give a name to your project, USB CDC, for example, and then click Finish. So same as before, uh, for this lab also, we can ignore these warnings, so click Yes. The first configuration we're going to do is to enable the EXTI on PC14. So this is the one, the I.O. that is connected to the user button on your nuclear board. So let's do this configuration. Okay, so look for PC13, so we type it here, okay, it's right there, select GPIO EXTI13, and then we go to GPIO, uh, that, make sure it's external interrupt mode with rising edge, that's great, same as before, we'll enable the interrupt, so done. Good, so our configuration for PC13 is done. Now we're going to enable the USB interface. So for this, in Pinout Configuration tab, under Connectivity, select USB, and then for the mode, click on Device Only. All right, so Connectivity, USB, so the last one, and we're going to select device only. We will enable the USB interrupt. In the NVIC, enable the interrupt. For the middleware configurations, there is two parts. First, we're going to enable the FredEx part of the configuration. Middleware, so scroll down. Look for middleware, and like we said, FredEx first, and we'll enable the core. The second part of the configuration of the middleware is going to be the USB X. So select USB X, and then we'll enable the core system under UX device FS, so FS for full speed. We will select the device core stack FS device controller FS. And then for the device class, we will select the CDC ACM. So this is for virtual comport. 
select USB-X, enable the core system, now expand UX DeviceFS, like we said, first enable the core stack, then the device controller, and for the device class, we will select the CDC ACM. Now we're going to configure the memory pool and stack size for USB-X. So this is where this is going to be done. So first we select the full size here with this amount and then the stack size with this amount. So the values that we have chosen here will allow the correct operations of the USB-X stack and application. Okay, so we scroll down. We're going to the memory configuration. First, we're going to change the size of the pool size. And we'll use the value that we defined before. And now, we'll take care of the stack size. So for this, we go here. Instead of 512, we'll use the value we defined before. Press Enter. And that's it. For the clock configuration, we will run at the maximum speed from HSI. So HSI with PLL to reach 250 MHz, which is the maximum speed of the STM32H5. Clock configuration tab. So we're going to select the HSI first. Uh, okay, and then, oh, sorry. So we'll have the HSI from here, PLL, and now we're going to have 250 MHz. It's going to find the configuration for us for the USB, you know, like, so we need to basically provide 48 MHz. So to do this, uh, we have, you know, like a MUX here. And uh, so we will select the HSI 48. So this is a clock that will be dedicated for the USB. 250 MHz, that's perfect. Now let's look for the USB. So USB clock is here. And so we'll run from HSI 48. So it should be already uh, selected, but if not, you know, select HSI 48. Now it's time to select the time-based source. So this is for the HAL timer as a time-based source. So basically, uh, usually by default, the time-based source, you know, is the Cystic. But here we are using, you know, the FredEx Artos. So in this case, we need to change the time-based source to be a timer. So a timer inside the SM32H5 instead of using the Cystic. So you can use any timer you want. So of course, as long as they don't interfere or conflict, have a conflict with other functions. So make sure you're using a timer that is not being used by your application. Okay, we go back to the pinout configuration tab and let's look for the system. So it's on top right there under system core. Sys, instead of Cystic, we'll use timer one. We will now enable the CRS. So the CRS sync is basically the clock recovery system. So we select the CRS sync source USB. So this will allow the auto calibration of the HSI 48 clock using the USB SOF for start of frame packet. So as a synchronization source. So this is needed to guarantee the correct USB clock accuracy. All right, so let's go to RCC and select CRS sync, and we select CRS sync source USB. Done. One last configuration is needed. To do this, we're going to go to the project manager and then click on advanced setting. We are going to change, so this is what we're going to change. We're going to click on this to do not generate the function call. And then we'll also uh, remove you know, this check uh, to remove visibility. So why do we do this? Because the MX USB PCD init, so this function here, will be called from the USB application user code instead of main.c. Click on project manager tab 
then advanced settings. So we said, so look for MX USB PCD init. So do not generate the function and then we'll remove the visibility. Okay, perfect. Now we can generate the code. So remember, so we can just actually save the project. So that will also generate the code and click yes. Change the perspective. Now we're going to add some code. So user code. Yes, again. So open the file called app underscore usbx underscore device dot c. So this is located right here in your project underscore usbx app app underscore usbx underscore device dot c. And in this file, we're going to add multiple things. So first, we'll add an include of main.h. Then we'll add some variables. And uh, at this point, so under, you know, like uh, a user code section, we'll also add some code, you know, to create the thread for the CDC write. Again, so the code to be added can be found in the description of this video. So, like we said, we're going to open USBX and then app, and we'll open this file. So app underscore USBX underscore device.c. The first thing we're going to do is to add the include. So for doing this, so we can put that, for example, here at this location. So put include for main.h. Now we're going to add the variables. So to do this, so in this section, user code begin PV and user code end PV will add, you know, these uh, variables that we'll be using. Now we're going to add the code, you know, to create the thread for the CDC write. So we're going to scroll down. And uh, so the proper location to put it is right here in this section, right there. So this is the user code begin for mx underscore usbx underscore device underscore init one. So add the code like this. So this is the one that will create the thread for CDC write. In the same file, we are going to add some other code. So right here in this function, so app underscore ux underscore device underscore thread underscore entry, we'll add some code to do the hardware configuration of the USB IP, to do a USB stack level driver initialization, to do USB D plus pull up enable. And then we'll also create, like put a semaphore when the user button is pressed with this function. So that will be a callback function that we'll be adding. So scroll down. So we're going to go to a different area. So this is the place right here. So instead of uh, this code, we're going to add this code. So this is where we're going to configure the hardware, the USBX and the other init that we are talking about. Okay, now scroll down. We're going to add the callback function now. So in a user code here at the end of the file, so user code one section, we'll add the callback function, you know, for the EXTI, so PC13, and set a semaphore right here. Now we're going to do a modification to another file called UX underscore device underscore CDC underscore ACM.C. So this is where we're going to add some includes. We're going to add some uh, parameters, you know, for the CDC uh, virtual com ports. So like the board rate, the number of stop bits, the parity, uh, and also the number of bits, you know, for the data. We'll add the buffer that we want to send, so the hello world. And then we'll have also uh, some code for the setting of the virtual com ports with default parameters on activation. Okay, so this is the file. So open this one, so acm.c. And first we'll add the includes. So two includes to be added. Now we're going to add some code in the PV section. So right here. 
And now, so we're going to add some code in this function. So what you can do is replace this code by this code. So this is for the activation. So we're going to continue adding code in the same file, so acm.c. Uh, we're going to add some code uh, to handle the CDC class request. And then we'll add some code also to wait for the semaphore, then transmit the message on USB. Okay, so the code we're going to be uh, adding is inside you know, this function. So let's add, so that's a big portion of code that we're adding here to handle, you know, the class, the CDC class request. And then last part of the code to be added about the semaphore, waiting for the semaphore and then transmit over USB. So this is this function to be added right here. And we are done with this file. Okay, so to open the file that we want, so this is the one. Uh, we're going to open this file, so the .h, right, acm.h, and we're going to add, uh, for example, uh, let's see, in this section, EFP, and we're going to add, you know, this code right here. And we are done, basically, with the code to be added. Now you can build your project, so this little icon will do the job. Okay, so the compilation process is pretty long, huh? you know, because we have so many source code, you know, to compile for FredX, but also USBX. So this is a pretty long process, so it can take some time. But in the end, you should have zero errors, zero warning. Okay, so to debug this code and to test, you know, our uh, lab, what we're going to do is two things. So remember, so, so far we're only using this connector, you know, to connect to the ST-Link and then the ST-Link connected through SWD. And also actually we know that there are some uh, like uh, GPIOs that can be used, you know, for virtual com ports. But now what we're going to use is also this connector right there. So CN13 and this connector is actually connected to the USB peripheral of the STM32H5 that we have configured, you know, like during this lab. So same thing, we'll use also the same button and we want to see that every time we press the button, we'll see uh, the hello world, you know, message that we sent over USB. So virtual COM ports. So basically it will be seen as a COM port, you know, on your device manager. And that's what we want to see and, uh, you know, in, uh, in the debug session. So for this lab, you will connect this cable to power, you know, the microcontroller and of course to be able to debug and load the code. And then this also, you're going to need a second, you know, USB cable. So another type C on this side, uh, in order, you know, to connect to the USB peripheral inside your STM32H5. So do this, connect these two to your machine, and then we'll enter debug session. So connect first, you know, the ST-Link part, so the USB cable for the ST-Link, number one, and then the second one, so second USB, connect it also to your machine, so you need Okay, let me check. Uh, so we have another port right here. Okay, great. Now we have the two USB cables connected. We can start the debug session. So here is another way to enter debug session. So you can do that and then debug as an STM32 C and C++ application. So we'll do that. Okay. change perspective, so switch. And now we can execute the code. As you can see, now our virtual comports, so CDC class device has been enumerated. 
And uh, from on my hand, it's a COM47 that has been associated to my virtual COM port device. So COM47, let's uh, remember that. So to find out what COM port has been associated to your device, you can go you know, to your device manager or you know, like if you have other ways on other OS, but for Windows, you go to your device manager. And as you can see, this is the device so that we have created. So our uh, you know, virtual COM port device. So CDC, ACM. And as you can see, COM47 in my case. Now we're going to open a terminal you know, for our STM32 virtual COM port device. So same as before, remember, the little icon here, you're going to click on command shell console. And we are going to select serial ports. But now we are basically going to have a new connection select. So do not, you know, use the previous one because the other one is connected to the ST-Link virtual COM port. So here we're going to create a new one with the new COM port, you know, associated. So you're going to select the encoding, same as before, the 8859-1, and click on new. Give a name to your connection. So for example, me, I'm calling it stm 2 underscore CDC. Then select the proper COM port associated to your uh, virtual COM port device for the stm 2 not you know the ST link. So make sure you select the proper one. So in my case, that's COM47. The rest of the configuration is the same. So we, because remember in the settings, we had 115,200 for the baud rates. We had eight bytes for the data. We had no parity and then we had one bit for stop. So then you can click on finish and press OK. Now you have your uh, virtual COM port, you know, like a uh, window right here. So the console created. So now let's try to press on the user button. And every time I'm pressing on the user button, I'm sending my message, the hello world. So it's working very well. Perfect. This is great. All right. And that's it. So this is it. That's the end of this lab. So we can now terminate. Great. Okay, perfect. So now you know how to create a USB device, you know, using our tool and our boards. Thank you.